Thank you for tuning in. I am Wellness Hero, and what we're looking at is an image of the Oroville Dam, the spillway, and the emergency spillway, because this is going to present three potential high-risk factors that are being forecasted, that are being predicted right now, and most importantly, that are happening, are going to happen. And there are certain things to take into awareness. I'm going to put them together utilizing some satellites, utilizing some scientific data, and some forecasting models. And we're going to begin right here at the Oroville Dam, because this is a 770-foot land-made dam, and then you have all this land mass through here. This is a massive, huge, huge area. And what you're looking at right now is... A pristine picture, a picture before what are the current conditions. And today is February 15th. I'm gonna, it's very important to note the timestamp on that because we're gonna be talking about some of the weather that's coming and the temperatures that are coming, as well as a, a predicted earthquake that is potentially coming. And most importantly, um, there is a lot more rain in the forecast. And it's really the third massive storm. And when we start looking at the facts here and we start kind of going down um, this emergency spillway and the erosion. That has taken place and then more importantly the man-made spillway where a huge gaping hole has been put and this is exactly um, what it looked like back on February 13th and it's really just crazy how much land has eroded there over time of utilizing this the, a huge massive hole has come in here and what we're looking at is a bigger, bigger, scaled out picture halfway up. It's no longer going down this concrete, not causing any erosion. From this point on, every time they use this, more and more of this dam, this natural landmass, is eroding away. And now for the first time ever, this emergency spillway, which is over a thousand feet, this is a huge, massive dam, mind you. It's 770 feet from the top of this down to the bottom of this. But when you add all this land and all this continued filled water coming through here on the Feather River, eroding more and more of the, the bank and the side, now you have this being used. A lot of this was cleared out by the Department of California in preparation for the spillway and the emergency spillway was toppled and through that tremendous amount of erosion in this area a lot of work has been done to add huge rocks and boulders yet the whole mountain is being torn every time this comes through and what we're further looking at is another picture where the spillway was just at the final stages and it has gone down a lot but through the going down process we're really looking at some of these pictures, and let's look at the scale of this. Let's scroll up here. Look at these people. Look at these guys. The roadway is completely gone, and it drops down pretty significantly. And look, I mean, it's just crazy to see the scale of this because there was the roadway, and then look how look how small these people are. They look like little ants, little ants coming through here, and it's crazy. So here's a good indication of damage on February 13th. Most of this is all gone. It's just all gone. This is this is all eroded away. And this is way more filled up on the Feathered River. And the concern is these three things. So as we go along here, we see that there's all this breaking news and it's already been evacuated. There's been a lot of coverage going on, especially uh, on YouTube. And the big thing is no one's talking about this. This is the most recent earthquake forecast prediction model via the disaster prediction app and as we can see right here California is in an orange area and what does orange mean when we look down here it's an increased risk of a magnitude of 5.2 on the Richter scale all the way up to 6.2 so there's an increased risk and we already know California is in a hot area but this is because of the OLR anomalies and electrical magnetics on our grid this is a forecast model put out by Ben Davidson. He's a suspicious observer on YouTube. I'll put all the links of all the maps I'm showing and everything in the description box below. But when we have this earthquake being forecasted, it has to deal with a high risk is a coronal hole. And what we're looking at here is the helioviewer.org. It's a satellite looking at our, uh, our star. And these huge coronal holes are straight energy being pushed out of the center of this huge ball of energy and it's just blasting and this is something that will 
you know, can affect the Earth in many different ways, but earthquakes, it's basically pushing on the crust, and then this is one of the reasons why we're seeing that. So a forecasted earthquake is one of the alert areas. This could shift further south. It could actually go away. But as we're approaching Thursday, because today is Wednesday, February 15th, and this was put out this morning at 5.30 in the morning. Again, Ben Davidson, he puts out this alert every day for the Earth, and it is 88% accurate. So what I'm going to switch over to right now is basically what's coming. And this is the weather we're looking at. This is uh, the, where I got the cursor right now. That's the Orville, California area. And I have it set for 5 in the morning tomorrow on Thursday. And what we're seeing is a lot of precipitation. If you add up all these numbers of the forecast, we're looking at about another inch of rain coming. Now, mind you, this is the third massive storm and that's you know it was after the second massive storm is why the emergency spillway toppled for the first time in the history of the dam and then we can look all the way back here and why would we look way back here because when we shift over to another this is the wind map of the earth we can just see this huge wind coming and just driving right along this convergence line all the moisture that's coming up from this the warm area of this pacific ocean and with this wind just driving, and there's Hawaii we can see right here, that bat precipitation, that back storm, it's already dark. It's going to be coming in this way as well. And then as we move even further, we can just see that there's, it's just a stream. It's just a huge, huge stream pushing all the moisture right at California. And the problem is it's already saturated. And this is looking at some of the temperatures. This is today, Wednesday the 15th. Look at this, the Sierra Nevadas are completely all above freezing. The Sierra Nevadas are saturated with not just snowpack, but here, let's, let's, let's check out something even more. This is the drought map. California is no longer, look, you know, if we focus on the Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas, look at this massive drought in the middle of the country. It's, it's extreme in some areas. But California is no longer in a drought. There is complete saturation in the ground. The Sierra Nevada mountains are loaded with snow. And as we look at the forecast, it's all above freezing. So all this snow melt is coming down. Look at this. As we move into Wednesday, very, very warm temperatures. Look at this. All in the 60s. The Sierra Nevada's 50s and the 40s. It's really warm up there, causing a lot of runoff that's unanticipated. In conjunction, when we go back, and we see, and we zoom in. Let's get really close to what this is. What's going on as we progress through this? It's going all over the Sierra Nevadas, dumping tons of rain, all coming down, filling up all the reservoirs. And the problem is there's already been this erosion. And it's going to be key coming. It's going to push it right ashore. We we'll already know we're filled with that. So when we look in the combined aspect of one, forecasting earthquakes. The last California earthquake back in December 8th, December 8th of last year, this 6.5 earthquake was predicted. We, the alert was put out just like you see on this map, in this orange map. There was an alert area. So if the ground shakes that's already saturated, slight shifts in the soil could cause something to happen. And when we look at an area like this, any shifts are significant. So one, earthquake potential. Two, the huge amount of warm weather that's just going to melt snow and just cause more runoff and fill it up. Just naturally, there's going to be more, more runoff over the next four days. And then three, another inch of rain is predicted for tomorrow. And that's also going to cause more snow melt and significant more runoff and just more erosion in the general area and vicinity. And this is underneath massive strain. This huge, huge 750-foot dam is just really underneath a lot of stress, and there's constant draining going on. They're constantly using this, um, this auxiliary spillway, and this emergency one, if it even happens to topple again, if this reservoir gets into the overflow state, well, we have these three massive factors. I just want to bring it to the attention. You know, as we're forecasting earthquakes and we're seeing this get into the 88%, as we're looking at, you know, precipitation that's going to be coming through the weekend, we're just really concerned about, you know, 
further, further storms that are coming behind this and more moisture is coming. And the warming of temperatures, looking specifically at the snow runoff, we're very concerned about the safety of what's going on, where the dam has been eroded, all this significant, significant damage. I mean, look, a lot of what keeps the dam up is the earth, and all this earth has been removed, and that makes me very concerned with earthquake, with more water, and with warmer temperatures and snow runoff. And I just wanted to show you through some simple resources. You can find all these resources that I'm showing you, these beautiful maps. And I'm in the east right now, and I know, you know, from watching these, we, we can know when weather's coming down, how these cycles and how these wind patterns, and when we put them together with what areas have gotten a lot of precipitation and what areas don't, it becomes very exact that our sun's influencing a lot and this massive coronal hole has a big indication with the earthquake and has a big indication with space weather. And you can see our Earth scale right there. So right now, I'm going to bring this to a close. I'm very grateful that you watched. Hit the like button. I want to bring more awareness to those three major factors that I see coming to the Oroville area. And really what I'm looking at is starting on February 18th. Starting on February 18th, there's going to have been, you know, a lot of uh, these factors are going to have been seen out, played out in day-to-day -day revealing of what's going on. And then from that point on, I'm concerned about all the erosion. Any storm that comes after the 18th of what happens after the 18th and just kind of seeing that progress. Well, let's leave a comment. Let's go ahead and like and share and be safe. As always, stay hydrated, live enthusiastically. I am Wellness Hero. Thank you for watching. Namaste.